world news tonight, defending the nominee. President Bush says if you want to understand his nominee for the Supreme Court, religion is important. Some evangelicals are offended that religion is even a selling point. Dancing in the streets of Baghdad, the breakthrough deal as Iraq counts down to the vote on a new constitution. A closer look at what to do about the skyrocketing cost of heating your home this winter, the practical solutions, and the soybean option. Preventing car fires, they happen once every two minutes. The simple new recommendations to avoid disaster on the road. And is this the future of the media business, the new product that lets you see hit TV shows when and where you want? From ABC News, this is World News Tonight. Reporting from ABC News headquarters, Elizabeth Vargas. Good evening. We start tonight with the defense of Harriet Myers. Once again today, President Bush found himself explaining why he chose Ms. Myers for the open spot on the Supreme Court. And for the first time, he addressed why his aides had been using her religion as a way to defend the president's choice. In many ways, the president was trying to reassure some of the people who have supported him most, people who now have serious concerns about Harriet Myers. ABC's Terry Moran joins us from the White House with more. Terry? Elizabeth, White House officials admit they were slow off the mark to defend Harriet Myers from attacks by conservatives, but now they're fighting back on two fronts, her qualifications and her religion. After meeting with the Polish president, President Bush was asked why the White House has discussed Myers' born-again Christianity and seeking support from conservatives. They want to know uh, Harriet Myers' background. They want to know as much as they possibly can before they form opinions. And part of Harriet Myers' life is her religion. For 25 years, Myers has attended evangelical churches in Dallas, and that fact has been used by Mr. Bush's staff and supporters to bolster her nomination. Why is his top eight going around telling emphasize. people how she prays? He's simply talking about who she is and what her background is. But the faith-based pitch may not be working. Radio talk show host Rush Limbaugh, citing reports that Mr. Bush was determined to nominate a woman, once again today blasted the White House. It had to be a woman. And the first thing was the nominee had to be a woman, i.e. quota. And on Capitol Hill, Republican staffers on the Judiciary Committee have been so scornful of Myers that the panel's chief counsel, Michael O'Neill, sent out an email warning. I really cannot stress enough that we need to be careful about what we say to the press. And aides to conservative Republican Senator Tom Coburn of Oklahoma say constituent calls are running two to one against Myers, compared to three to one for Judge John Roberts. White House officials believe part of the problem is that Myers' qualifications for the court are just not well enough known. She's a, uh, a brilliant legal mind. She is a hardworking uh, lawyer and, and confidant of the president and someone who as White House counsel deals with a lot of constitutional issues. Uh, and she was a trailblazer in, in her field in Texas and she is a woman of faith. White House strategy now is to shore up support among conservatives and sell those qualifications, try to portray Harriet Myers as a very accomplished lawyer. And Elizabeth, they say they still have the votes in the Senate, but then they would. Yes, they would indeed. All right, Terry, thank you. President Bush's comments today about Harriet Myers and her religion were in part a reaction to a controversy sparked by one of the most influential evangelical leaders in the country. Dr. James Dobson said that he had been given confidential information about Ms. Myers, which convinced him to support her nomination. Today, Mr. Dobson revealed what he had been told. Here's ABC's Dan Harris. On a radio show broadcast to millions of Americans today, Dr. James Dobson explained himself. Karl Rove has now given me permission to go public with our conversation. Dobson said Rove told him that Mr. Bush chose Harriet Myers only after several better-known conservatives refused to go through the often bruising nomination process. Dobson also quoted Rove as saying the president only wanted a female nominee. And uh, you can imagine what that did to the short list. That may have cut it by 80 percent right there. Last week when Dobson said that he was supporting Myers after the White House had told him things he probably shouldn't know. I do know things I'm not prepared to talk about here. Leading senators threatened to haul him before Congress. They suspected Dobson had been given assurances that Myers would vote to overturn Roe versus Wade, the landmark abortion case. It did not happen, period. 
Dobson said Rove did tell him that Harriet Myers is an evangelical Christian. She is uh, from a very conservative church, which is almost uh, universally pro-life. Some evangelicals are offended that the White House has been touting Myers' Christianity. It is patronizing to use an evangelical faith uh, as a political commodity. Many Christian conservatives were already frustrated with the administration for not doing enough to stop illegal immigration, federal spending, and same-sex marriages. The Myers nomination has exacerbated that frustration, with some evangelicals saying the president only pays them sufficient attention come election time. They want our support, but they don't want anybody to know that they are affiliated with us. One thing evangelicals agree on is that this controversy disproves what they call a common misconception, that evangelicals are so simple and obedient that they always walk in lockstep with one another and with the president. Dan Harris, ABC News, New York. And now overseas to news the president is also watching very closely today. In Iraq, hopeful signs that a new deal on the Constitution could make a difference when it's put to a vote this weekend. A number of leaders representing the Sunni Arab minority have agreed to support the new Constitution. They had been urging Sunnis to boycott the elections. The enormous question tonight for the U.S. and Iraq is, will the Sunnis show up and vote? ABC's Martha Raddatz is at the U.S. military headquarters in Baghdad. Martha. Elizabeth, this sudden compromise by Iraq's political leaders is being hailed as a breakthrough, with one calling it the beginning of a new era. In Baghdad tonight and in Najaf, some Iraqis celebrated news of the compromise. U.S. officials had been pushing Iraqi Shiite and Kurdish leaders to reach out to the Sunnis, fearing that violence in Iraq will get even worse if the Constitution passes in its present form. The compromise approved tonight could give Sunnis a reason to vote for the Constitution because they could have a chance to help redraft the document after December's elections. The Sunnis had little input in the original document. A senior member of a leading Sunni party, which had been telling followers to vote against the Constitution, is now telling members to vote yes. But not all Sunnis are convinced. Tonight, at least one prominent Sunni urged his followers to vote down the Constitution. The senior commander in Iraq, General George Casey, told ABC News tonight that this compromise makes the Constitution more suitable for all Iraqis. All our estimates tell us that the Constitution will pass, and I think there have been some things that ha have happened in the last 24 hours here uh, that will give it e an even greater chance of passing. General Casey met with commanders in Kirkuk today to nail down security plans for the vote, which include a four-day curfew beginning tomorrow, and just as they did during January elections, all traffic will come to a halt. But with only a few days to go before the vote, Iraqis will have very little time or resources to get the word out to Sunnis about tonight's compromise. Elizabeth? All right, Martha, thank you. There are already signs the insurgents are stepping up their attacks. In the city of Talafar, for the second day in a row, a suicide bomber attacked a crowd of people, killing 30. Another 34 died in a bombing yesterday. Just two weeks ago, President Bush pointed to Talafar as an example of a successful joint Iraqi-U.S. operation to clear the area of militants. In Pakistan, President Pervez Musharraf went on television today defending his government's handling of the earthquake disaster there. He admitted many people still have not gotten the help they need, but he said no country could be ready for such a huge disaster. With the government's response so lacking, private groups have stepped in, and in some cases, that has the U.S. very concerned. ABC's David Wright is in Pakistan. Not far from the epicenter of the earthquake, there's a supply depot piled high with blankets, clothes, and food. This is not the work of an international relief organization, and it's got nothing to do with the government of Pakistan. All of this is privately organized? Yes. This privately, is a private privately. organization. Nope. It's a fundamentalist Islamic group called Jamaat Uddawa. Many of its members used to belong to militant factions, now banned in Pakistan as terrorist groups. And they are filling a void here. Only the Mujahideen, the militants, are helping us, said this man. Hello. 
Pakistani Kashmir has long been a magnet for extremists. Al-Qaeda is known to have training camps here, and Osama bin Laden is thought to have used this area as his escape route after he fled Afghanistan. There are reports tonight that some training camps were destroyed in the earthquake. Disaster relief here is more than just a humanitarian gesture. It's an opportunity to win hearts and minds. That's one reason why the U.S. is playing such a visible role here. Today, American helicopters were able to reach mountain villages that had been completely cut off. But five days after the earthquake, the Pakistani government is still unable to cope with the huge demands here. Whether it's handing out food and medicine, pulling dead bodies from the rubble, or rebuilding damaged infrastructure, private citizens are mostly having to go it alone. Natural disasters are no one's fault, but here, as in New Orleans, disaster relief can be highly political. David Wright, ABC News, Masafrabad, Pakistani Kashmir. In Syria, there are questions tonight about the mysterious death of the interior minister. The official Syrian news agency said he committed suicide. Ghazi Kanan had served as Syria's intelligence chief in Lebanon for 20 years. All over the region tonight, there are suspicions that he was murdered to cover up evidence that Syria was behind the assassination of Lebanon's former prime minister, Rafiq Hariri. When we return, the new warning about soaring heating bills. Homeowners are getting creative to save money. How about using corn pellets to heat your home? We'll take a closer look. In other news, the little known danger inside your car, the fires that occur every two minutes, new recommendations to reduce the risk. And your favorite TV show in the palm of your hand, the two and a half inch screen that could change the television business. This is World News Tonight, brought to you by Lunesta. It's time to discover Lunesta, a sleep aid that can give you and your restless mind the sleep you need. Lunesta helps most people sleep all through the night and works quickly, so take it right before bed. Lunesta is non-narcotic and approved for long-term use. Of course, do not use sleep medicines for extended periods without first talking to your doctor. Be sure you have at least eight hours to devote to sleep before becoming active. Until you know how you react to Lunesta, you should not drive or operate machinery. Avoid taking Lunesta with alcohol. Most sleep medicines carry some risk of dependency. Side effects may include unpleasant taste, headache, drowsiness, and dizziness. Ready to catch a great night's sleep? Just climb into bed and leave the rest to Lunesta. Nature fanatic. Health nut. Grape nuts eaters have been called many things. Bear. Fortunately, they haven't heard a word of it. The unique nutty crunch and delicious taste of grape nuts. Live life your own way. Jim's best friend died of a heart attack with no warning, and I worried it could happen to Jim. His doctor said you should always have genuine bear at hand. Just one has enough aspirin to help save your life during a heart attack. <laughs> we both feel better when I have my bear. Why wait? Why wait? Osteoporosis. Easy to ignore, but it could be there, even if you don't look, feel, or act your age. Fortunately, you can do something about it. Bone loss can be reversed. Fosamax is a hormone-free tablet for postmenopausal women at risk for or with osteoporosis. In 10 years of clinical research, Fosamax has been proven to help reverse bone loss. And Fosamax helps prevent fractures of both the hip and spine. You should not use Fosamax if you have certain disorders of the esophagus, are not able to stand or sit upright for 30 minutes, have severe kidney disease, or low blood calcium. Before use, talk to your doctor if you have stomach or digestive problems. Stop taking Fosamax and call your doctor right away if you develop new or worsening heartburn, difficult or painful swallowing, or chest pain, because these may be signs of serious upper digestive problems. I'm not putting it off a minute longer. Talk to your doctor about Fosamax, because bone loss can be reversed.
to take a closer look tonight at the alarming rise in home heating bills. The government said today that the heating bills will skyrocket this winter because of tight fuel supplies and production problems caused by the hurricanes. Households using natural gas will pay an average of 48% more than last winter. Heating oil customers, 32% more. And households with electric heat, 5% more. Homeowners are scrambling to try and find newfangled solutions to keep their bills under control. Here's ABC's Betsy Stark. With two kids in college, an old New England house, and a neck injury that gets worse in the cold, Eileen Flannery has lots of reasons to worry about how high her heating bill could go this winter. Lots of money. Lots of money going out the door. And that's an unknown. And that's frightening. She's tried to make her house energy efficient, replacing old windows and doors, and laying down floor trim to keep out the draft. But with forecasters saying the days of cheap oil and gas are likely gone for good, Flannery and a growing number of Americans are looking for alternatives. And this week, she got one. A $4,000 stove that will heat her home with high-density wood pellets made from sawdust. We're expecting about $1,000 savings this year alone. John Sullivan owns the store that sold her the stove. He says homeowners panicked about their heating bills, have driven sales of pellet and wood-burning stoves up more than 300 percent just since July. Because fuel oil increased so dramatically in price, it's caused people to look for other alternatives. In the Midwest, where heating bills are expected to be highest and corn is abundant, corn stoves powered by dried kernels are gaining popularity. Northeasterners are trying to cut heating oil costs by using bioheat, adding inexpensive soybean oil to their furnaces. There are less exotic ways to save money. And these cause really, really big air leaks in your house. In Portland, Oregon, Bija Goodoff is getting advice from an energy auditor whose services are free through her local utility. I was surprised to learn that something like the recessed lighting in the kitchen can be a place where cold air leaks in. Check your heating bill. You may be eligible for an energy audit, too, especially if you pay a monthly conservation fee, Elizabeth. All right, important advice, Betsy. Thanks so much for our closer look today. When we come back, the new warning about surprisingly common car fires and the recommendations on how to avoid them. At 6'4", 220 pounds, Bob's a formidable man. But he was no match for something less than one millionth his size. It KO'd Bob so fast, he didn't know what hit him. It was a clot. Like Bob, if you've been hospitalized with heart-related chest pain or a certain type of heart attack, what doctors call ACS, chances are you've had a clot. But now, Bob's doctor is helping increase Bob's protection against heart attack and stroke by putting Bob on Plavix. Plavix, in combination with aspirin and other heart medicines, helps provide greater protection against heart attack and stroke than aspirin and other heart medicines alone by helping keep blood platelets from sticking together and forming clots. If you have a stomach ulcer or other condition that causes bleeding, you shouldn't use Plavix. When taking Plavix alone or with some medicines, including aspirin, the risk of bleeding may increase. To minimize this risk, talk to your doctor before taking aspirin or other medicines with Plavix. Additional rare but serious side effects could occur. Ask your doctor about Plavix today because no matter how formidable you are, you're no match for a dangerous clot. If you take Plavix with aspirin, continuing to do so will help increase your protection against a future heart attack or stroke. Beyond aspirin and your other heart medicines alone, you may be feeling better, but your risk never goes away. Help stay protected. Stay with Plavix. With so much more to see, shouldn't you be watching it on the Aquas Liquid Crystal Television? From Sharp. Customer service is back in shipping. Call us and we'll show you how we're changing the way the shipping business does business. Hi, Smith from Archives. Uh, we've got a little problem that I think you as the head of HR need to know about. It's called Johnson and it needs to go bye-bye. This gentleman refuses to leave. He's a troublemaker. 
that needs to be... Kellogg's Toasted Honey Crunch. So crunchy, so honey, so clustery, so good. You're in on it, aren't you? Kellogg's Toasted Honey Crunch. Sounds good. Tomorrow, would you give your family milk and meat from cloned cows? Guess what? You may not even have a choice. Find out just how safe cloned foods would be and if there's any way to really know what you may be eating on World News Tonight. In Los Angeles, the Catholic Church has finally come clean about decades of sexual abuse involving priests. The Archdiocese released the personnel files of 126 priests. They chronicle 75 years of cases in which the church was warned about clergymen preying on children but failed to take steps to protect the children. All over the Northeast today, the rain just keeps coming up to five inches in some places with another five inches expected in the next few days. Flash flood warnings are up in many areas. New Hampshire has had its worst floods in a quarter century. We have important news this evening for anyone who owns a car. ABC News has learned that the American Automobile Association will issue a warning tomorrow about car fires. We were startled by the statistics. There were 266,000 car fires last year, killing 520 people. There are ways car owners can reduce the threat. Here's ABC's Jim Avila. It took seven surgeries, but burn victim Bob Amar can finally play piano again. It was just a, a, a horrible explosion. In less than a minute, Amar suffered third-degree burns on his face, hand, and arm, sprayed by a gasoline fireball during a violent traffic accident on a Southern California freeway. The Bronco behind me was hit so hard that it ruptured the gas tank. Amar is just one of more than 1,300 car fire victims every year. The National Fire Protection Association reveals that cars burn on American highways once every two minutes. More people die in vehicle fires than in apartment fires each year in the United States. And 75% of those car fires start not with an accident, but with plain bad maintenance. I never took care of my car. 20 years ago, Mary Alonzo, a student at the time, couldn't afford to keep her car up. One day, the muffler just erupted in flames leaving Mary with burns on 30% of her body. Take care of your car now, so you won't have to pay the price later like I did. See how quickly it flames up. This AAA demonstration shows six flammable fluids under the hood. Power steering fluid, engine oil. Among tomorrow's AAA recommendations, check underneath the car for leaks. The prime suspect, the oil pan, the steering rack, which in this case is leaking very close to the catalytic converter which is the car's main emission device and can heat up to some 600 degrees. And if a fire does break out, most injuries and deaths can be prevented by moving 100 feet away. And say firefighters, never open the hood to fight the inferno yourself. It only feeds oxygen to the flames. Jim Avila, ABC News, Orlando. And that warning and recommendations coming out from the AAA tomorrow. When we return looking for another iPod revolution, a new way to watch TV anytime, anywhere. I'm one of those people who doesn't like to be held back. I have my fast acting inhalers. So I thought I was in control of my asthma, but I was using my inhaler a lot. So I learned about something more I could do. The more I could do. The more I could do. If you use your fast acting inhaler more than twice a week for symptoms, talk to your doctor because you may not be in control of your asthma. Singular helps prevent asthma symptoms before they start and helps provide 24 hour control in a once a day tablet. Singular is not a steroid, and Singular is also approved to help relieve seasonal allergy symptoms. Singular will not replace fast-acting inhalers for sudden symptoms. Continue taking your other asthma medicines as prescribed. If asthma symptoms get worse, contact your doctor at once. Side effects are generally mild and vary by age, and may include headache, ear infection, sore throat, and upper respiratory infection. Join the millions of people with asthma who have discovered Singular. I learned about something more I could do. Ask your doctor about Singular today. To the Thanksgiving traditions of turkey, parades, and football, this year, a new tradition will be added. Betsy, you've won a million dollars in the publisher's clearing house. <laughs> this Thanksgiving, the prize patrol could surprise you with a million dollars. 
Watch your mail. I've been sending it in for years. Or go to PCH.com. That's PCH.com and enter. Then, Thanksgiving Day, you could say... Thanks a million, Publishers Clearing If you're concerned about catching a cold or the flu this season, here's an idea. Move to a deserted island and avoid other people for six months. Or just drink a glass of Florida orange juice every day. Give your immune system more of the vitamins and minerals it needs. Florida orange juice. Healthy. Pure and simple. This is a family company and it has been since 1886. I've learned a lot from the generations who came before me. My father taught me to never come out with a product unless the consumer can see a difference. We will not introduce a product that isn't better than what's out there. We feel a great responsibility to families who buy Raid or Windex or any of our products. We make products that are genuinely useful. This is a family tradition that I intend to carry on. S.C. Johnson, a family company. Fred is the ladies' man. We just need to find women with some substance. Chris is the wingman. They sound fat. Together, oh man. Psycho chick. You came with a label. The series premiere of Freddy. Tonight at 830, 730 Central, only on ABC. We end the program tonight with the future. Well, perhaps the future. For quite some time now, we've been hearing media executives everywhere talk about making movies and TV available on what they call alternative platforms so consumers can see them when and where they want. Until now, it's been a pretty vague vision of the future. ABC's Brian Rooney reports on the news today from Apple. Apple's iPod made it fashionable to walk down the street with little white wires coming out of your ears. They've sold nearly 30 million of them. It revolutionized how people buy and listen to music. It's been a huge success for us, and therefore, it's time to replace it. <laughs> so for Apple, a video iPod able to play music videos, television shows, and movies was the logical next step. The new 60-gigabyte iPod, thinner than current models, holds 15,000 songs, 25,000 photographs, and plays 150 hours of video on a color screen. So it's really up to you whether you want music and photos, music and video, but first, it's about the music. There is competition. Just yesterday, the Dish Network released its Pocket Dish with a screen up to 7 inches holding 40 hours of video. Creative Technologies' Zen Vision has been sold for two years. The new iPod threatens to do for movies and television what the...